My goodness, grape juice. The lack of shame in our leadership. Tis a damn scandal. We've currently got a whole former Minister of Justice, Saki Shangala, and the former Minister of Fisheries sitting in the took for allegedly masterminding the corruption that has seen billions of Namibian dollars siphoned out of the mouths of the country's citizens. Just this week, it was reported that former Justice Minister Saki Shangala had a cell phone confiscated from his cell. Where is the justice? Even Prime Minister Sara Kukongelwa reportedly sold two of her farms to government, and the LPM's Heni Sebeb made this submission in Parliament. Now I hereby give notice that on Thursday, 1st April 2021, on the April Fool's Day, I shall ask the Minister of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform the following. Mm -hmm. And I don't see the Minister of Agriculture, water and land reform. They, they will take note of the question to get to him. To don't worry. Because I, I wanted to say last time when we asked questions that concerns the head of state or the former head of state, he comes and gives a ministerial statement here. I don't take yeah. time to do that. Now I'm going to ask this question. It is the information that a certain Onesmus Tobias Pugontelwa Married out of community of property to a certain Sahara Nanjila Pukonkelwa Amadila took a loan from Agribank to the value of five million and an additional amount of one million from the said institution on 6 December 2020 using the close cooperation since the moment investment 56 close cooperation registration number CC stroke 2010 stroke 06 stroke 19. It appears that the debt was meant for the purchase of portion one of farm to week number 1149, measuring 2,476 hectares in the Otto Dontuba region. However, it is the information further that the said Zara Nanjila Amatila Pukunkelwa has received a resettlement farm through the Ministry of Land Reform, which farm she has registered on her name or that of the close corporation. Completely unlawful in terms of resettlement laws and policies of the country. And that time, her family was the Minister of Land Reform. Or it is also further alleged by certain Hay Omsan community members in the Tumep area that a farm to which they were resettled was occupied by the certain Amadila family, threatening and attempting to force them from this land about two to three years ago. We are further informed that the above mentioned individuals took loan amounts totaling 15 million from Bank Venduk and NetBank as follows Bank Venduk, 8 million, NetBank, 7 million. These loans have become due and payable. And it seems that the debtors are unable to pay the amount and are, as alleged, attempting to force the Ministry of Land, Water and Agriculture to purchase farm to wheat and another undisclosed farm at premium prices with the sole purpose of paying off the principal debt of 15 million to the commercial bank. Therefore, we ask the following, and I have a proof from one of the banks that these people are owing. I can give it to the minister. Therefore, we ask, number one, is the minister of lands and agriculture aware that there was an unlawful, unlawful transfer of state land into the private hands of a senior politician in the Swapo party, namely Sara Nanjila Pukonkelwa Amadila, and under which law, or exception to the law, was such transfer of state land made to the said person. Number two, if it is correct that the said person was indeed resettled on state land as part of the National Resettlement Program, she will only qualify to obtain a loan of 200,000 Namibian dollars. How then did she obtain loans from commercial banks to the value of 15 million Namibian dollars? contrary to the resettlement policy. 
Number three, moreover, it seems that the statement was used as part of the collateral for the loan application. Yet, we loan monies were not utilized on the improvement of the farm, but was rather used for construction of houses in the north of the country. Is the minister aware of this transgression? And how does he intend to visit this matter to the satisfaction of the public and to the prudent use of national resources? Number four, and lastly, at the same time, is the minister aware of the land grab pointing toward a certain Zara Kukonkelwa Amadila and her husband against the vulnerable San communities, marginalized communities, who are landless and homeless, who have been dispossessed of land and livelihood by a sitting prime minister in the so-called Swapo government. Agriculture Minister Kalesh Letwine quickly called a press conference saying, It is factually incorrect to state that Dr. Sarah Mandila Kukugelba Amadila, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Namibia, was at any point resettled, applied for resettlement, nor did she benefit under any provision of the National Resettlement Program. The Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform has verified through its database that the farms in question were privately purchased under normal commercial scheme loans, which are administered by the Agricultural Bank of Namibia. And bonds were indeed registered over the subject farms. Equally, it is factually incorrect to state that state land was used as part of collateral for any part of these loans. The farms that were used as collateral belonged to seize the moment investment 56 CC and held under deed of title number T760 stroke 2012. They were privately owned at the time of the transaction. The now former Minister of Defence, whom Job alluded to as Abacha, was the latest victim of his sleuthing ability and handed in his resignation last week, almost two weeks after having been outed on social media. I spoke to activist Olsen Kahiriri about this. We must understand how the corrupt cartel is operating. We are told by the President of Namibia that uh, corruption is not a systematic thing in Namibia, but we keep telling the nation that corruption in Namibia is gazetted. It's rooted in all the structures of the country. Everywhere you lay your hands on, there's corruption. One important aspect that I can uh, take you to is how do, does a head of government administration, who's a, a prime minister, has a business dealing with the government, sells a farm to government. Government wanted to buy that farm in 2012 for three million. Today, they are selling it to government for 14 million. And you are at the center of these decisions and you are still in office, not suspended, not fired, the president is silent on that. I know why the president is silent on that. Because day by day, people are getting very close to him. Because all his cronies, Abacha was eating with the president. It's obvious. All these guys that you are implicating into corruption, they are very close to the president. I want to understand how the Namibian system works. The president was not aware of the Kora money. He was not aware of what Sakius was doing. He was not aware of, of the lawyers of England. He was not aware of Abadja's dealings. He's not aware of anything in this country. Yet, he is the chairperson of the cabinet. He appoints these tax. Izimu appoints all these tax 
funny enough, you sit, you are having Sarah, head of administration, stealing indirectly from government. And you are not even sorry about it. You will see the likes of Nicanor making noise about Swapo not being corrupt. Sakeu said it. The clerk said it. That the transfer of money should go to Swapo. And who benefited from that uh, money? Is Hakes presidency. He's back in office through corrupt dealings. To me, you guys are calling it fish rod. I'm saying it's state capture. A, 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 a few guys organize themselves to take over government and thieving everything that they can lay their hands on. We are in serious trouble because the ACC is afraid to touch the right people. The ACC is afraid to deal with hackers, uh, cronies. If you go and are they going to declare their assets now? And is Haki going to declare his house in Portugal? That mansion that he bought in Portugal, is he going to declare it? Or is he going to say he, did not, uh, he doesn't have a house there? These people, these people don't know that we, are, we know everything that they have been doing. The superhero and mayor of the city of Vintujopa Mupanda recirculated a clip shot by the Namibian newspaper in which the founding father asked the nation to respect its leaders. The post read, Anua, we must respect ministers. This means including Abacha. Sometimes these people really set up the old man. Sorry, founding president. Sorry to disappoint you. We will never respect corrupt people. It won't happen. Never. Sorry. Check out the clip. Well, I call, I call upon all the, the Namibians to respect our elders, to respect His Excellency, President Haki Gago, and all our ministers, and to ensure that the peace and stability prevails in every age of the Republic of Namibia. Activist Olsen Kahiriri shared his views on this. Respect is end. How do you expect me to respect a thug? How do I, as a Namibian citizen, is expected to respect a thug, a thief? Ha. Thieves only belongs in jail. And that's where their respect is. So if you put the president and his cronies in jail, for stealing our resources, then I will have respect. It's because of the founding fathers we are, founding father, so-called founding father, I, do, I don't describe him as a founding father anyway. He has not found anything. Apart, he has found a corrupt Namibia. That's, that's my understanding. But anyway, it's because of the so-called founding father that we are into this trouble. He has created these people. He has put them into power up until today. Anyway, they are hiding behind him. If he does not come out with a stick, what respect does he even deserve from me? Because I respect my children's inheritance. And my children's inheritance can be four billion that we uh, loaned yesterday from I I IMF to come and put it in these tax hands. No. It should be sustainable developments that our children should inherit. But how do you build sustainable development if we have thieves running the country? The Swapo Party has finally decided to suspend disgraced former ministers implicated in the fish rot saga from the Swapo Party. Swapo spokesperson Hilma Nicanor fielded some questions after the press conference. Your question uh, uh, that um uh, of course, Wapo Party is saying we don't condone corruption, uh, but you are saying, and we are saying we didn't benefit from the fish rod money, and I continue to emphasize and boldly say yes, that's what we are saying as Wapo. You brought in the issue of Honorable Nekundi, 
the Deputy Minister, and we also brought in the issue of our Secretary for Swapo Party uh, uh, Youth League, asking whether the, the party have um, asked them. Well, to me, this remains again, again allegations. And in my statement, I said Namibians should feel free to, if you are aware of any criminal, you know, act or suspect any criminal kind of a thing, we have the institutions in this country, established, of course, by the Swapo Party government. And while saying so, I am saying that uh, I know how media works, but I'm also saying don't put words in my mouth. The statement here is written. I have said the Swapo Party government created the anti-corruption commission as an institution to deal with issues of corruption in this country. I didn't say Swapo. I'm very much clear that there is a difference between Swapo Party as an organization and the Swapo government. It is a Swapo government. Now, you further went to say, it seems when uh, senior officials are involved, then Swapo is mute. My dear, I have in this statement, we are talking about Bernard Esso, who was a member of the political bureau, much senior than the two you are referring to. Yeah? So, uh, uh, and really, it doesn't save, uh, save, save anything for us to hit around the bush. Uh, of course, the issue of the former Minister of Minister of Defense and Veterans Affairs, uh, I have not known of any anti-corruption uh, talks around there. But what has transpired is what we all know already via the media there, and what he himself has said, you know. Uh, now, whether the credit should go to Ampanda or not, my dear brother, whoever Ampanda is, that is not really my issue here. What I'm giving through uh, uh, is that we have a well-organized political party called the Swapo Party with its structures, organs, and, 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 and. And that this very Swapo Party is the ruling or governing party in the Republic of Namibia. Therefore, reference that I'm making to government institutions, pro processes, and systems uh, that are in place. To me, Ampanda is not a, a, a is not, is not uh, what is it? Uh, it, it, it is really something, it's a non issue. Thank you very much, it's a non issue, you know. But I can also vividly recall that the pressure here was for Swapo to say whether or not we received or we benefited. Actually, the term that has been used is to say whether Swapo has, been, has benefited from the fish rod money. And that is what we have been answering all along, and that is what we are still saying. The story of twisting it to say whether it went through individuals and to swap, swap it away. Swap have got, as I said, it's an organized political party. We have our own official, legally held accounts. And that is what we can refer to. And we are saying here, we are talking about Swapo and not individuals. That's exactly what we are saying. Uh, the party didn't benefit. I invite you, I invite you, while you are here in this building of Swapo, please don't go up. You are free to view uh, the books of Swapo, and they are being audited. So what we are, the, the point we are making here is Swapo party, not individuals, you know. It's like you have a house, mm -hmm. you are a father, your child go out today, commit a crime, I cannot come and say, uh, what's your name again? Matthias. Matthias is corrupt or you have raped while it is your son that went and raped. That is the difference. Sadly, the number of reports of varying degrees of corruption systemic in this country leave us drained, dejected and feeling powerless. We must applaud the likes of Swarbe of today. 
the likes of Henny Saber of today, the likes of Amupandas of today, the likes of uh, McHenry's of today, because these are the people that are genuinely standing up for the Namibian people. And those that are protected, all the bunches that are just there to thief from government. Look at uh, how embarrassing Pear was. That he's, he's even suing his girlfriend. This, these guys are not serious. This, these are the leaders that you guys want to worship. Ah, this, this, this country is going down the drain. And you know what? The West loves them. The West would want a corrupt African to be a leader. On that way, they can help, have their hands on to Namibian resources. You want to tell me that the Chinese are the better constructors in this country? What happened to, to the Ryoboth busters? Look how Ryoboth is constructed. It's built by Namibians with brains to build proper buildings. Everything that governments have built five years ago is falling apart. What have we, as a country, saved from the billions that we have spent year in and out? Nothing. We cannot even produce a toilet paper. That's, that's, that's how pathetic our government is. And today they are speaking of socialism after 30 years of, of independence. That's the song they used to sing before independence. But they just become bourgeoisies. Mafias, facts, because they survive from ricketeering, maladministration, and all this nonsense. So we have a bigger fight as Namibian young people. And that fight must be protected through the survival of the likes of Job, Swarbwe, uh, Henny, and these guys that are advocating for the betterment of, the, of, of, of our people. You see, and our people are there in the street also, also uh, challenging how Swarbwe and Henny them are challenging these people in parliament. How do you, how do you expose a, 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 a thief? You, you cannot have a light discussion when you challenge a thief. You must be brutal because a person of that character should be dealt with. Now, they are, uh, they are distorting the truth, swear by them are failures and all these things, and then you want, if I need to respond, then I must respect you as a woman. First of all, you insult me, you say I'm a failure. And then my response must be, you are a woman. No, you are a useless person. Because that's why you see failure as in me. Because success is between a person and success itself. But now, how are you a judge to come and judge and say people are failures because they are questioning how you thief this country? We are not afraid of them. And one by one, they are going to jail. One by one. Because we are, the more we expose these people, the more we clean our country from these corrupt gems. These people will be remembered for 30 years of, of thievery. That's it. Nothing productive out, came out of them. So founding father, or whatever they call him, must move out of this. Because this is a generational fight that we are willing to take. Because he fought his battle, he's, he's done. He created thieves, and we are going to deal with those thieves. Whether he likes it or not, we are not even afraid of him. Those who get agitated by him being told to, to get off, he's not our master, he's not our God. He can't be God unto us. We are having our own destination, and our destination is to deal with these thieves, one by one. Thieves, time to Chaila is now. We're going.